Epic Stattle One speedruns of statistics. Brian Stevens versus Pin Charts and Pivot Tables. Begin. The first thing you want to do with any pivot chart is look for its context. If you notice here, we're analyzing the average number of children people plan on having on whether or not they are male or female and their relationship status. So this is the context for this pivot chart and all data needs context. With this, let's look to see if there's any unusual features going on right here. To look at the unusual features, we just mainly look to see if there's any big differences between the groups. You'll notice right here that there's a big difference between the views of males and females when they're engaged or married. Males want to have 3.7 children and females want to have 2.5 children or 2.6 if you round up. That's a difference of more than one child. So we can also see some differences here where the males are generally pretty consistent if you look at where the males are at, except for the one group, the males are much higher in this group. The females are also pretty consistent across their groups and then you see the it's complicated group with a slightly higher average than all the other groups. So the both groups are pretty consistent. Uh, the males are maybe more consistent. And then there's this big jump for males when engaged or married. And then the females pretty consistent. But then there's a big jump for the it's complicated group. Kind of seeing if you notice any jumps in the data is a way to look for unusual features. But maybe we want to look for the outliers because there's more ways to analyze this data. We could analyze the min, the max, the median, the average, lots of things we could analyze. So let's go ahead and take a look at the max for this data right here. And so this is the maximum number of children people plan on having based on each group. So one thing, make sure you notice the context immediately. Start immediately looking for the context here. We have maximum number of children people plan on having based on their relationship status and whether or not they are male or female. Now with this right here, let's see what this means. Well, it at least represents one person in each group because it's the maximum. There might be multiple uh, males right here reporting it's complicated because the maximum value is four, but it's more unlikely that there are multiple females right here who are single reporting uh, 16 children. So that's a pretty big outlier right here, which might end up skewing the mean. So one way we can look for unusual features is to look at the min or the max. We could also see additionally how many people are in each group. But remember, a big note to take right here is we could look at the min, the max, the count of observations in each group, the mean or the median. We can analyze a lot of different things with pivot charts to isolate and look what's going on within the variables. One last thing we want to do is think about the recommendations. Now, these all have been excellent pivot charts with the numbers rounded to a good decimal place with the axis titles and the chart titles and the legend titles. But let's look at the options we have. Here are the options we have. With the axis ease, you can put on an X or a Y axis. You can also put axis titles on those. So we'd probably want to check that box right here. You can put on a chart title, which is what goes over top of the chart. So there's your chart title. And here's your Y axis title and your X axis title. You can put data labels. Those will appear above your bars. If you put data labels, you can do a data table. And the data table is what we saw before with the data table with the numbers down below here. So that'll display your numbers in a table below. Error bars is generally used for quantitative data to give kind of confidence intervals on it. We've got grid lines if you want the grid lines to appear on your graphic. The legend, which we saw on ours for male and female. There's the legend right there and a trend line if you have quantitative data. And with all of this, you'll have an excellent pivot chart that's easy to read. You know what? AVGN, Angry Video Game Nerd, your challenge. Can you beat this in under four minutes? Good luck, everyone.